I ranked all 65 biomes from Biomes Are Plenty. <laughs> Lame. Exploring the world of Minecraft gets a little samey after a while. As of version 1.20, there are 63 different biomes that you can explore. I'm not counting the void, you can't make me. Among those 63, I'd subjectively count roughly, uh, 37-ish distinctly unique environments. Not counting variants like the flower forests and the like, mind you. Ah, and if you really take away the extra dimensional stuff, that brings you down to around, uh, 31. Oi oi oi, that's not really a lot of variety when you start amassing tens, hundreds, and thousands of hours playing Minecraft. Oh, I'm old. Man, if only we had just a couple more biomes. If only we had plenty. Heavens. Biomes of Plenty is one of the most popular Minecraft mods of all time, as of recording, currently sitting at over 123 million downloads between both CurseForge and Modrim. Originating in 2015 on versions 1.8 and 1.7.10, Glitch Fiend mods have continued to update the mod to this very day, all the way to 2024 on version 1.20.4. And thank goodness they have. In this video, I'm going to be ranking each and every biome available in the mod on version 1.19, the native version I developed my own mod pack, ReSurvival, on. My hope of this video is that it'll act as a nicely comprehensive overview for both mod players and mod pack makers, so that they may easily assess the quality of each of these biomes when playing and developing mod packs themselves. That, and I hope I can give you a good gaggle or two along the way. Not much more to say than that, I don't think. Without further ado, let's get into it. The Auroral Gardens are an incredibly pretty snowy biome that feature the unique gimmick of rainbow trees. The leaves of the trees are a different colour of the rainbow, depending on where in the world they're placed, kind of similar to end spires from Quark. The prismatic leaves themselves contrast excellently against the pale grass, white birch logs, and snow layering that comprise the rest of the biome. These icy iris flowers are also very cool. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> B+. Plus. The Bamboo Grove is… fine. I'm not really a fan, to be honest. I appreciate the decent use of blossoming oak trees alongside the nicely poppy cherry trees, clovers and bamboo shoots. It's attempting to make a biome that feels decently varied and interesting, and yet, despite that, it's still somehow weirdly basic and dull. I don't know. The violets and pink daffodils adds a lovely, if nothing else. D minus. The Bayou feels like one of the nicest takes anyone has ever had on a swamp biome in Minecraft, even Mojang. There's a wonderful use of height variation between the biome's trees that, even on their own, keep the landscape feeling interesting, but which is complemented exquisitely through the hanging Spanish moss present everywhere too, which creates a fantastic contrast between itself and the ever-present calm moss green of the biome. 1.19's mud block is also used rather effectively for contrast too, breaking up grassy islands that comprise the landscape. Perhaps the best thing about this biome on a gameplay level is the fact that it asks the question of whether it wants to be a land biome or a water biome, and decisively answers with the latter. A lack of obstructions, like lily pads and a thorough clear pathway of water throughout, make traversing it by boat an absolute breeze. <laughs> an exquisite environment that puts vanilla swamps to shame. A. The Bog is, is easily one of Biomes of Plenty's worst biomes. I know I just said is twice, but frankly, that was a mistake in the script and I'm keeping it because I feel like that's how much effort this biome deserves. Cause yeesh! The grass is ogre green. If, wait, are ogres green? Ogres are yellow? The grass is an ugly desaturated ogre yellow, listed to the brim with garish ogre brown bushes, accompanied by green, red, and bronze tree stumps. It's like the equivalent of an ugly Christmas jumper. That I have to walk through. F. The Cherry Blossom Grove has one of the most garish leaf textures I've ever seen in my entire life. 
It looks like the latter's chain pattern texture, and creates this supremely unsightly contrast between the bright pink of the leaves and the void-like gaps in between them, generating visual noise regardless of how far away you stand from them. Which is negligible enough in the bamboo grove for the trees' spousity, but unavoidable when they're the main focus of a biome. Besides all that though, the biome's just downright boring. Samey dull tree shapes and heights throughout, the flowers are bland, it's just lacking. So much potential to see. The Clover Patch is a trefoil packed varin on the plains biome. Despite the fact that four leaf clovers are genetic anomalies in real life, this biome is comprised of nothing but them. Amongst the small ones, there are also very large, man sized clovers, too, which is not accurate to the real world either. I guess nobody told Biomes of Bunny's developers that because they're everywhere. I sure hope somebody got fired for that blunder. The grass color is not the most appealing in the game either, but that's alright. In conjunction with the lilies dotted around, this is a decent, albeit plain, plains biome. See. The Cold Desert is one of the most feature-rich biomes in all of Biomes of Plenty. As you can see, there's so much to do here, including looking at desert grass, and dead grass, and mining gravel. So much gravel, so much flint, the possibilities are endless. Maybe you'll even find the dead body I buried back here in 1997. I feel like I should hate it, but frankly, it's kind of nice. A nice shade of ogre grey, and feels relaxed in its simplicity. Maybe that doesn't make sense to you, but by god does it make sense to me. C, or S tier if we're going on re-survival ratings. Flintrich! The coniferous forest is pretty nice. It feels kind of adjacent to tiger biomes without any of the podzol. Its tree leaves create something of a pseudo ceiling as you make your way through the forest, which paired against its slightly desaturated naturalistic color palette makes the place feel kind of homely. Dull, but pleasant. Oh, I also like the toadstools. That's all, B plus. The Crag is a stony hill-based biome comprised of stone, cobblestone, mossy cobble, and grass blocks. Though you'd think such a number of blocks all paired and scattered about together might seem garish, stone-type blocks always seem to mesh well with one another, no matter what. They also add a nice feeling of texture to the biome that you can hardly find elsewhere. The grass blocks also feel like they integrate pretty well too, serving as a nice complementary colour to all the grey. It kind of evokes a sort of Scottish Highlands feeling to me. I don't know how accurate that is because I've never been, but that's the vibe I get. I like it. B. The Crystalline Chasm is the first of the few nether biomes added by Biomes of Plenty. Building atop the nether wastes, this biome simply slaps a jam load of rose quartz crystal clusters absolutely everywhere. Featuring a thick purple fog to complement the saturation of pink crystals, although this biome should theoretically feel noisy, instead of crystals integrate into the environment nicely. I suppose because the pink slots fairly well into the nether's already warm palette of deep reds and bright oranges. It's nice. The crystals also make little ambient tingling noises too, which are cute, though they can get a little irritating after a while due to their frequency. I think it would be nice if the crystal blocks could be turned into different kinds of building blocks given their abundance, but as they are, they're inoffensive, if entirely useless. Whilst this doesn't contribute towards the ranking, if you install mob compact, you do get rose quartz, bricks, glass, gel, and a new little mob, the crystalline slime. I like it. Good biome. Very nice. B. Gee, it sure is dead around here. Utilizing a very unique bronze pad for its leaves and a far more desaturated, almost gray look for its logs, the dead forest stands out as an excellent change of pace amidst Minecraft's typically lush green forests. Besides all that, the trees also feature the supremely simple yet very unique branch sprites that stick out from the sides of the trunks. A small detail, but one which adds a hell of a lot. If I had to give any critiques of this biome at all, while I do like the ogre yellow turn for the grass, it could have been leaned into a tad more, I think? Perhaps to a browner shade to hammer home the dry, dead feeling of the biome. All in all though, A. Often found as an intermediary biome bordering deserts and forests, the Dryland is a pale, sparsely populated wooded plains type biome, featuring the delightfully exciting, uh, pale bushes. Yeah, it's aight. I appreciate the unique grass colour, but it's otherwise pretty uninteresting. See? Paul Atreides unites with Cheney and the Freeman while seeking revenge. <laughs> 
The Dune Beach is your typical old beach biome, with the singular exception of being absolutely flooded with dune grass and sea oats, the former of which don't drop seeds and the latter of which don't drop oats. How am I supposed to make porridge in Minecraft now, huh? How am I supposed to enjoy my hole and oats now, huh? It certainly adds a little life to what is otherwise a typically pretty dull biome, but perhaps a little too much life? This feels excessive, and the slight noisiness of the textures doesn't really help matters either. As we go on, you'll see that's kind of a trend amongst biomes of Plenty's biomes. Just a little too much flora. See? Easily the most volcanic biome in Biomes of Plenty, more so than the volcano itself, the erupting inferno is constantly spitting out fiery particles in every direction, from its signature fuma rolls, in conjunction with frequent lava pools everywhere. Not a single step you can take feels safe, which is very cool, and unlike the Basar Delsas, you don't have to deal with annoying height variation and tiny, easy to fall into death pits. It's very flat. I appreciate it, but it feels quite noisy on the eyes. The block that comprises the biome has quite a scaly sort of texture to it, and it's immediately more noisy than Neverack or Basalt. If it were tuned down a little bit, it would integrate far better. Maybe a transitional block would also help make it feel more natural. Pretty cool biome though, all things considered. B tier. The inspiringly named field biome has a bunch of flowers in it. They look nice, and uh, oh, a load of bushes covering the ground, which is actually kind of cool. In actuality, they're just a bunch of one to two block trees, which I think is funny. You could argue they feel like litter on the ground, and I wouldn't exactly fight you on that, but with something like Fast Leaf the Cairns Doll 2, that's not too bad to deal with, and actually works as a fairly decent consistent source of sticks and apples. Overall, the biome definitely feels distinct enough from other planes type environments of its category, which is good. C. Maybe D actually, I don't really like this biome very much. <laughs> In effect, the fur clearing is basically just an itty bitty coniferous forest, which makes sense if you look at it as a sub biome to that one. It effectively feels like a plains biome with some tiny fir trees thrown about. It's cute, it's fine, but I probably wouldn't live in it. C. Another smaller biome that generates alongside larger ones, the Floodlands, <coughs> are a tiny little pool of lily pads, water roots, and drip leaves that jet out from the water, creating a nice little pond wherever they happen to find themselves in. In spite of their diminutive size and presence, they're nice, both from a distance and close up. And really, what more can you ask for from a biome than that? B minus. The forested field is a field with some spruce trees thrown on top. Boring! D. I love the fungal jungle. Making creative use of dripstone stalagmites, pods or patches, field bushes, and the all new huge toadstools, this seemingly eclectic arrangement of features all come together to create a truly fantastical biome, but most certainly more than the sum of its parts. Accented wonderfully by the vibrancy of its floral coloration and the awesome yellow fog that permeates the biome. Frankly, if it was expanded upon and given a couple more unique blocks in its generation, you could easily slide this biome into a whole new dimension, and no one would notice. Not to say it's unfitting of the overworld, however. It works supremely well. S tier biome. The first of two cave biomes from Biomes of Plenty, the Glowing Grotto is conceptually super cool, beating out the Never update for first coming up with glowing huge fungus plants, and the Caves and Cliffs update for large spreads of a blue fungal-like substance blotting over the underground stone. On the ceiling, glowworm silk can be found hanging out and having a good time, creating some really cool ambiance in larger caves. Unfortunately, the biome has a massive, glaring problem. The small glow shrooms that are dotted about only light up their own moss blocks, and nothing else! I'm not sure why, since if you place a torch, the lighting that comes from it is smooth. So, what's that all about? Is it a bug? Is it intentional? I'd assume the latter of how long this mod's been out. It's weird, and I don't like it either way. B for bad lighting. The grassland might be one of the worst biomes I've ever seen in my entire life. There are no flowers. My nostrils are incensed by the abundance of clovers, which are already featured in their own biome. And yet here they are, taking up another precious slot and biomes are plenty's limited roster. The plains already exist, and it's grassier than the grasslands. <laughs> All 
Although an unassuming plains biome on the surface, the highlands and their highland moors manage to neatly set themselves apart by distinctly hilly terrain. Covered in a variety of flower types, its lovely rich shade of green make the landscape a pleasure to traverse. In addition to the very neat overhangs and cave openings that sometimes present themselves. Simple and clean, very nice. A. The Jade Cliffs are boring. It's effectively just a taiga with green fog. That's it! I guess it also features bushes on the ground, and some of the trees have less leaves, but like, it's still boring. <laughs> Not terrible. I just hate it. D. <laughs> When you first stumble upon it, the first thing you might notice about the Lavender Fields biome is that there is a lot of lavender. The second thing you might notice is that it's everywhere, which isn't necessarily an awful thing. If you're going to make a biome that's absolutely overwhelmed by a single type of plant, lavender is not an all terrible choice of foliage. Why did I say it like that? It complements the green of the grass nicely. The only real problem I have with it, besides the fact that the biome is just a little too common for its own good, is that it makes fighting enemies a gigantic nuisance, as your sword is a lot more focused on breaking lavender than the bones of your foes. The lavender forest is effectively the same biome, just with some additional purple-leaved trees, which are rather pretty. Not huge on them just using the cherry tree's ugly lattice pattern, but what can you do? Their darker coloration makes them less garish, so I can forgive it just a little bit more. Both biomes get a solid B+. B for lavender. Primarily utilizing a lovely orange sandstone variant as its mainstay block, the lush desert gracefully integrates interestingly shaped, nicely height varied acacia trees with green leaves onto its warm yellow backdrop, creating a nice amount of variety. With fairly frequent but unobtrusive flora, this biome feels supremely clear in what it's going for, and achieves it excellently. I love it. A. Much like the lavender field, the lush savanna is filled to the absolute breaking point with poppies. Unlike the lavender field, these guys don't integrate into the environment quite as well for a variety of reasons. For one thing, the poppy sprite is significantly smaller and so it feels like it more so dots the landscape as opposed to filling it out. For another, the ground of the biome is covered in coarse dirt, an already noisy looking block, alongside shrubbery. Throw poppies on top of that and the whole thing just feels a bit messy. Whilst I acknowledge these flaws with the biome, I don't majorly dislike it. The palette overall is quite nice, it could just be executed a little better. C. I love the Maple Woods. I am an absolute sucker for anything that brings more awesome themed elements to Minecraft, especially any biomes that add trees of the redder variety, which this one delivers in spades. They may simply be oak trees with fancy new maple leaves that look lovely, might I add, but sometimes, being real, all you need in life is a tree that is red. God, I love autumn. Hey. Do you or your loved ones have a marshing problem? Suffering from damp feet, creaky joints, or that ominous green sludge growing from under your rucksack? No, there's nothing to be ashamed of. One in five people have marshing-related illnesses. But don't worry, the good Samarshatans are here to help. Unfortunately, despite the name, the marsh does not contain marshmallows. It contains seagrass. Oh. Despite this glaring flaw, it's kinda cute. Pretty straightforward little transitional biome between dry and wet ones. Very nice. The design is very marshy. B. Taking the best bits of the tiger biome, featuring the charming podzol and those ever-delightful spruce wood trees, the Mediterranean forest is considerably less dense than your typical wooded area, giving you plenty of space to stretch your legs and admire the scenery. It's really not anything massively special, it just makes excellent use of the few elements it does incorporate. A running theme of biomes of Blendy. A. Sporting a name that breaks away from the other snowy biomes' snowy prefix, the muskeg thinks it's so special just because it's pretty. Like my ex-wife! Well, you know what? I concede. It can take the kids into divorce. The contrast between the lifeless trees and the pure white snow-laden ground is absolutely delightful. I like it a lot. Maybe even a smidge more than its original counterpart. Hey! Easily the most magical biome of the mod, 
The Mystic Grove is a delightfully whimsical feeling fantasy forest, with big blue trees, turquoise grass, giant red mushrooms, and even purple water. Special mention goes to the clovers, which look really cool with a bluer tint to them, I think. Although already quite standout, this biome looks even nicer at night thanks to its glowing flora, giving it a thoroughly distinct and pleasant aura. That rhymed. Wow. Incredible! The sparkles are nice too. B+. Plus. Taking the theme of the dead forest and stretching it out, the old growth dead forest is a taller variant on the original biome, but lacks the original sprinklings of the livelier oak and spruce trees. I love the shape of the trees. It really feels particularly unique amongst every other forest biome in both Biomes of Plenty and Minecraft. With a palette more monocolor than ever before, it feels even more dead than the original. Now with 200% more death. I'm unsure on whether I like it more, however. Either way, a solid A. The ominous woods boldly feature some of the darkest colors to come out of any biome in the overworld with tall fur-like trees sporting nearly black leaves amidst some deep, dull navy blue grass. Additionally, the biome uniquely features brambles poking through, which is cool and distinct. I appreciate the attempt to go for a darker grass color, but it sadly contrasts terribly with the dirt texture on the side of itself, creating streaks of dark blue versus light brown, which is fairly ugly to face when by any cliff, river, or ravine. While I also appreciate the brambles, they're so infrequent that they feel tacked on. Maybe making them a greater focus of the biome would alleviate that. Also, the polluted looking black water of the biome borders terribly against rivers, looking more like a visual error than an intentional coloration choice. All in all, a neat, ambitious biome that sadly doesn't reach its full potential. I'll give it a B though, why not? A basic, slightly less dense oak forest variant, the orchard features some supremely simplistic, albeit delightfully nice, flowering oak leaves blocks amongst its oak trees, alongside a good scattering of rose bushes for a good measure. It's such a starkly simple premise for a biome, and yet it's just so pretty. I like it a lot. A. The Origin Valley is a wonderful throwback to Alpha Minecraft. Featuring a neat, almost uncanny plainness to its terrain unseen in modern versions of the game, all you get here besides the animals are poppies and dandelions sitting atop lime green grass besides the lime green trees. It's so weird. I love it. And hey, if you want to really recreate the past, turn down your render distance and add a strong fog for the best effect. A tier biome. Echoing the lavender fields, the pasture is another plain types biome filled to the brim with barley, which just like sea oats, cannot be eaten. Come on! Everything I said about the lavender field kind of applies to this biome too. Though of course this biome is yellow and not purple. Speaking of the contrast of the lav fields, they tend to border each other frequently. They do look quite nice together. B. So oh, simple, the prairie is an ab- STOP RAINING! It's an absolutely lovely little foresty plains biome, featuring sparsely placed yet rather fancy looking oak trees with small litterings of barley about. It's just downright pleasant. It makes me happy. Yeah, I don't have much more to say, I just like it. Don't judge me. A. Another awesome themed biome, I naturally love the pumpkin patch. With beautiful orange maple trees dotted around a biome filled with sparse bushes and tons upon tons of pumpkins, it's just absolutely cozy. Oh, but of course, who doesn't just have pumpkins, but lit jack-o'-lanterns too? And even giant pumpkins? Ooh, they're pretty cool. <laughs> Toadstools also make their grand return here. Just a generally really cohesive feeling warm biome. Especially at night where the jack-o'-lanterns truly shine best. I love it a lot. A. Taking on a form not unlike the dark oak forest, the rainforest is a deliciously tropical biome that features both a stellar shape and lovely colors amongst a ton of ferns, with mahogany trees pillaring throughout the biome. As it is a jungle of sorts, you can also find parrots, melon patches, and these cute little orange flowers called orange cosmos. Very pretty! Though never a focus, the watercolor being this bright turquoise is also lovely, and looks great in the sparse instances that you can find little water pools or aquifer caves, like this one. A tier biome. 
easily one of my favourite biomes within the entire mod. The Redwood Forest is absolutely awesome. With trees nearly as massive as their real life counterparts, walking through this biome is truly dwarving. While creating a biome of this size might seem easy, it's actually quite challenging to avoid it feeling boring and tacky. However, through the use of shelves of leaves dotted up the tree trunks and the thicker bases of the trees, which allow glimpses of the slightly brighter log interiors, this biome achieves excellent variety in both shape and colour palette throughout itself. The texture of the logs themselves is also stellar, as are the leaves. Although the leaves utilise a texture similar to cherry leaves, the colours and distribution work excellently in their favour, making themselves unobtrusive and actually quite pleasant to look at. And of course, there's pods all again, which is always a treasure to see. S tier biome. <laughs> Taking the awesome shapes of the rainforest trees and interspersing them throughout a biome that heavily utilizes terracotta, one of the most visually pleasing biomes in all of Biomes of Plenty is created in the rocky rainforest. I nearly forgot the name. There's excellent variation in color, with the warm orange of terracotta complementing the vibrant grass hues very nicely. Persistent bushes and mahogany trees dot the landscape, adding to the lush, lively charm of the place. Additionally, the vines hanging down in certain areas look excellent, especially when placed against a mountain or cliff backdrop. A plus biome. The scrub lands are clearly designed for Minecraft scrubs. Not awful by any means, but undeniably dull. This biome is filled with tons of scrub bushes and not much else. Was this really necessary? Looks like I know where I'm putting you, Theo. See. The seasonal forest is gorgeous. Comprised of a mixture of yellow, orange, maple, and desaturated oak leaf endowed trees, this place is a perpetual full paradise. The mixture of oak, dark oak, and birch tree trunks, both subtle, also quietly break up the monotonous palette of a single tree type forest too, just as its leaves do. Simple yet oh so clean. A tier biome, moi. Bordering alongside its more lively sister, the Seasonal Orchard takes the golden-leaved birch trees of the Seasonal Forest and turns it into an entire biome of its own. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to say about it, really. <laughs> it's exceedingly pretty. Call that a shallow metric for judging it if you'd like, but I'd say that's all it needs for me to call it an A-tier biome. The Shrubland is a drier-looking field with even more bushes laid about. There's barely a cubic inch you can walk without finding leaves rustling under your feet. They're honestly kind of neat, but I certainly don't like them enough to ever want to live or build in them. Similarly, the rocky shrubland is effectively the same thing, just with some stone thrown in for good measure. I think it might be also a bit more mountainous too. You got a lot more hills here than the usual shrublands in my experience. I say some stone is thrown in, and I really mean that in the most conservative of measures. For being a rocky shrubland, there's barely any rock. I think it'd look a lot nicer if more stone generated, frankly. I like how it breaks up all the green in the few instances you can find it. Shrubby C tier for both biomes. The snowy coniferous forest is a coniferous forest that's snowy. Snowy forest biomes are always a delight, and this one is no exception. Though I think I may be more partial to the unsnowed variant by just a touch. Not sure what it is, but I kind of like the dullness of the other version. Might just be me. Quite lovely nonetheless, though. A tier. The snowy fur clearing is a fur clearing with snow. C tier. The snowy maple forest is a maple forest with snow in it! That's crazy, right? I think I like this one less than the regular maple forest, interestingly. Kinda loses the focus of the standout red of the trees. Not bad by any means, just slightly less striking to me. A minus either way though, still quite nice. The second of the two cave biomes introduced by the mod, the spider nest is covered with cobwebs. It features, to my memory, the only interactable block in Biomes of Plenty, the spider egg. Stepping on or breaking it will cause it to explode into a witty bit of little cave spider that will attack you. It's a very neat little obstacle, and fairly easy to avoid so long as you're paying attention. Whilst a very cool biome already, I think it could have been taken further. Maybe if patches of the ground were replaced with full webbing blocks to fill out out more in areas? Kind of like dripstone blocks in the dripstone caves. That'd be cool. Otherwise though, it's pretty neat all the same. B for Batman Piter Man. <laughs> <laughs> the 
reminds me of Sonic. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's the trees. Oh. oh. Don't panic over these palm trees. The tropics are perhaps the most vibrant forest biome in all of Biomes of Plenty, featuring not only their supremely distinct palm trees, but also bamboo shoots and other beautiful flora. From pretty pink hibiscus to these lovely blue hydrangea, uh, <laughs> I think, <laughs> to the poppies in between, it's effectively a little slice of paradise. They're islanders, so good luck finding them. A tier. Taking the general vibe of the trees from the dead forest biome and applying it to the grass of this one, the tundra is a very dry, very dead looking plains biome with numerous small maple bushes strewn about. And there's also some cobble and mossy cobble scattered about too. It has a nice unique sort of standing amongst other biomes. I think it would be cool if they used the basis of this biome for another dead forest fiend one. <laughs> I'm not biased to anything. <laughs> why, would you make, why, would you make, why would you think that? Pretty nice all things considered. B. The undergrowth should really be called the overgrowth, because there is just way too much flora in this godforsaken biome. Starting with the positives, I will say that I'm quite fond of the creative choice to use green vines and leaves. It's a daring decision that could risk not paying off, and you can argue it doesn't here, but I dig it, so I strongly appreciate that. Alongside the green flora are the brambles from the ominous woods, in addition to a new wood type, hellbark trees, let alone all the goddamn fire flowers that will set you alight should you just tap your toes on them. Between all these different floral pieces, just the sheer quantity of them unfortunately makes the biome look disgusting from a distance. Just the worst visual noise from any biomes of plenty biome, rivaling the likes of better never in terms of noisiness. Which is just a shame, because I appreciate everything else it's going for. It's absurdly weird to me that the brambles are used between both this and an overall Biome, which makes retexturing them for multiple uses um, just kind of annoying. <laughs> Though I recognize acutely that it's well overcooked, I'm still rather undeservedly fond of it, and I enjoy encountering them. B tier. Easily one of Biomes of Plenty's coolest biomes, the Visceral Heap is an absolute hellscape made out of flesh and blood. This biome is undeniably alive, featuring lung plants, blinking blocks, flowing blood, and, um, even moving hair. It's pretty gross, and quite unbefitting of Minecraft in a vanilla context. Though it may be sickly, I love it. I especially love the fleshy strands that connect the lava ocean to the ceiling. Incredibly cool. If you also have mob compact installed, you can additionally find the jawbreaker populating the biome. A giant set of chomping teeth. They're so funny looking. A tier for sure. The volcanic plains are an absolutely striking biome that carve out their very own unique category. What that category is, I'm not entirely sure. It's like a cross between a desert, a field, and a plains biome. Making bold use of black sand, which I love, in conjunction with dark green grass blocks accompanied by a sprinkling of bushes, this place truly has a uniquely distinguished vibe that I can hardly find anywhere else in Minecraft. It feels alive, in a weird sort of way. I think perhaps the darkness of the black sand emphasizes the flora to a stronger degree than any other biome does, which I like a lot. A tier for sure. Of course, what would the volcanic plains be without a volcano to accompany them? Unfortunately, the biome that the plains lead into kind of sucks doo-doo. Effectively, a basalt deltas, but worse, the volcano is absolutely plastered with smooth basalt, which when tiled like this makes it plainly obvious it was not intended to be used in such a capacity. Should have just used the nevers basalt. Alongside that, you have inconsistently generating lava pools, which are bordered by regular stone, which looks terrible, enormous clusters of magma blocks that already look bad in small space due to the veins of red spreading across them, but they've never looked worse than when featured in this biome. It's a real disappointment given just how nice the plains biome preceding them is. But alas, what can we do? Can't all be winners. D. In a way, the wasteland kind of feels like what the cold desert should be. A distinct landscape that encapsulates the feeling of isolation and emptiness. There sure ain't much going on here. The ground is dry salt, and all that lists it is dead sprouts and dry grass. The polluted water is a little ugly. I do appreciate the dust particles that lister the fog in the air, though. B tier. The wetlands are the lands that are wet. 
Though from the name, you might expect a marsh, the wetland is actually a forest biome. And seeing as it's so wet, it is one of the most richly colored biomes in the entire mod. If I had to describe this biome with one word, it would be England. <laughs> it feels very English because it's raining all the time. Of course, it sports my beloved spruce trees, in addition to a very deep blue watercolor, which looks absolutely lovely outside and in. A lovely biome, A tier for sure. Sporting colors far more akin to an end-themed biome than a withered one, the withered abyss sure does exist. The most obvious and distinct feature besides the little blackstone rocks that jut from the ground are its blackstone bulbs, which are crying obsidian colored for some reason. I suppose in fairness there are patches of obsidian and crying obsidian, but like, why though? It doesn't feel very well thought out. They just kind of added them together because they're both black blocks. At least it's here if you want to mine obsidian to go home, I suppose. It works, but yeah, <laughs> B tier. The wooded scrublands are an absolutely lovely plains variant with sparse bushes and the occasional pretty flowers. The grass color's quite nice too. Uh, yeah, not much to say here. B tier. The wooded wasteland takes the nice foundations of the wasteland and adds dead trees. Ah, absolutely beautiful. Could not be better. Even got lilies dotted around for good measure. Good stuff. A. The most hardcore environment in the entire mod. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. This is an absolutely worthless biome. It's just an oak forest with a couple more flowers. Why? I don't know. It sure is a biome that exists. F tier. I realized I didn't actually state the name of the last biome because it was just that boring. It's called the Woodland. This is the old growth woodland. The last biome on this list and a variant that features predominantly huge oak trees as opposed to the all normal sized ones of the original biome. This single change alone makes the biome 100 times more distinct, and in spite of its simplicity, actually makes me like it a fair bit. Concluding this list on a comfortable C tier. And so, with that, all 65 biomes are done and ranked. I am very tired. <laughs> But before we conclude things, I think it would be worth tallying up all the rankings. So, 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 all in all, we have 4 F ranks, 5 D ranks, 12 C ranks, 19 B ranks, 23 A ranks, and 2 S ranks. 23 A's and 19 B's is pretty damn good, like that's a pretty good ratio. That's 44 out of 65 nice ratings, and the C's ain't nothing to sneeze at either. They're just, um, they're fine. I could take them or leave them. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that I think biomes are plenty. <laughs> Spear, stop laughing! <laughs> biomes are plenty is a pretty good mod. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Um, and donating to the Patreon so I can keep making them. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later. Join my Discord, bye bye <laughs> But Neko, what about the end biomes they added in the new update? Aren't you gonna cover those? God damn it! <laughs>